This is WPTA-TV Fort Wayne, a Granite Broadcasting Company station. Your number one news with Marty Light, Keith Edwards, Greg Johans, and Jay Walker. Now, the latest from the 21 Alive newsroom. Good evening to you. Gunshots rang out in Fort Wayne's inner city, part of everyday life in an area ravaged by crime. Shortly after 7.30 this evening, a familiar call went out. Man down on Gay Street near Pontiac, critically wounded by a gunshot. On their arrival, they found uh, Ronald Williams laying on the sidewalk in front of the arcade with a gunshot wound to the stomach. He was transported to the hospital. We have been advised that uh, the person that did the shooting left the area, possibly in a 1974 maroon Chevrolet Monte Carlo. Police have arrested a suspect identified as 28-year-old Steve A. Cotton of the 2200 block of Oliver. He's being held on $50,000 bond. The investigation continues. A spokesman for former President Ronald Reagan says Reagan will fight an effort to pry loose excerpts from his diaries. The defense for former National Security Advisor John Poindexter wants to use the diaries in Poindexter's Iran-Contra trial. But Reagan's spokesman says the former president will invoke constitutional confidentiality. That will enable Reagan Reagan to gain access to a secret filing from Poindexter telling the judge why he needs the diaries. In a related item, lawyers are reviewing an order for Reagan to provide a videotaped deposition in the Poindexter trial. Reagan and President Bush have until Friday to invoke executive privilege to avoid testimony by Reagan. Here in Fort Wayne, prosecutors are trying to tie up some loose ends in the Jack Lee case. Yesterday, Lee was found guilty on four felony counts. But Mike Loomis of Indianapolis, the prosecutor in the case, says charges are still pending against a former manager of the Tender Touch Massage Parlor for promoting prostitution. And a warrant has been issued for Stephen Bender's arrest. A former regional lottery director is wanted for obstruction of justice but failed to show up in court as a material witness in the Lee trial. The fact that the trial has concluded that there are verdicts that a conviction of Mr. Lee was obtained on four counts does not in any way lessen my desire to see Mr. Bender brought to justice for that count. Loomis says Bender was a regular customer at the Tender Touch. Also, the state might press perjury charges against Lee and some of his witnesses. A prosecutor says former Exxon Valdez captain Joseph Hazelwood was visibly drunk when he boarded the ship. Hazelwood faces charges in Anchorage, Alaska related to last year's oil spill in Prince William Sound. In opening statements today, the prosecutor said Hazelwood sat in a bar for seven hours drinking vodka before arriving on the Valdez. Hazelwood says he left sound orders for his crew and was not on the bridge at the time of the accident. Sources in Moscow predict the Communist Party will easily approve President Gorbachev's proposal to end the party's guaranteed monopoly on power. Gorbachev told the policy-making Central Committee today the Communists should prove their worthiness by competing against opposition parties fair and square. He also said the political reforms have he's orchestrated have, in effect, already created a multi-party system in the Soviet Union. The Reverend Jesse Jackson met today with British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher at Number 10 Downing Street. Jackson is in London on his way to Zambia and South Africa. Jackson says he believes that sanctions are still needed to force South Africa into dismantling apartheid. Thatcher disagrees. Jackson says he hopes to meet with South African President F.W. de Klerk, but no meeting has been set. The mayor of Indianapolis has his sights set on a higher office. William Hudnut today announced he intends to run for Secretary of State. The 57-year-old Hudnut says he's been approached by many Hoosiers all over the state who encouraged him to run. But he admits the campaign must start now if he's to beat Joseph Hogsett. I'm way behind. In terms of fundraising, everybody knows that the incumbent Secretary of State has raised over $550,000. And anybody who gets into this race against him will be a decided underdog. Two other Republicans who had been seeking the nomination bowed out of the race today, both publicly endorsed Hudnut for the job. The absence of a city truck ordinance is driving many residents crazy. Since last year, no official truck route system has been enforced. As a matter of fact, tomorrow night, Fort Wayne City Council takes the first step towards devising a new ordinance. It starts with the findings of the, Oregon, I should say, Oregon Goods Movement Advisory Committee. As 21 Alive's Marianne Bird reports, one of their suggestions may rattle the residents of Paulding Road. The unveiling of the committee's proposed truck route may make some residents in the 6th District unhappy. That's because Paulding Road will now be included. 
Eli Saman, director of transportation planning, says the decision was made objectively by professionals to fit the needs of the area. That's an area that has been zoned and is actively an industrial area. So to provide that area with the services, obviously the direct route, the most efficient route, will be to use Paulding. Under the new plan, Paulding Road will end as a truck route at Adams Center Road, meaning trucks servicing the Adams Center landfill can take Paulding or the traditional route, Tillman Road. Sixth District Councilman Cletus Edmonds says he realizes Tillman must stay a truck route to serve the landfill, but Paulding Road is another story. Uh, we are not happy with uh, Paulding Road being included in the, in the plan. We, we think it's a reasonable compromise that Tillman Road be the, the authorized uh, east-west truck route. Simon says the new proposal is an improvement over the old truck route system and that you have to look at the big picture. I think it's only fair to analyze the whole area and look at the whole area. What are the positive moves that we have taken? Edmonds will fight to keep Holding Road off of the truck route, but admits he doesn't know if he has the support he needs from the rest of the council. He says at the very least he wants the road resurfaced so it can handle the weight of the trucks. Marianne Bird, 21 Alive. It looks like old mad winter went south for the season. Jay's forecast is coming up. And a little later, we'll see why beating the rush may not be worth your while. Tomorrow's forecast is coming up in two minutes. Stay with us. Woody's picking out, and Frazier knows why. Food became your substitute for sex. Next time on Cheers. Cheers, tonight at 1135 on 21 Alive. The 1469 Auto Mall, that's where it is. Four great dealerships, eight mates, and 33 model lines of new cars with over 1,000 new and used vehicles in stock, all in one convenient location. You can even get financing at INB, baby your new car at TST, or get your old car fixed up to look like new at the Auto Mall Body Shop. That's where it is. 1469 Auto Mall, that's where it is. I'll handle your loan requests from start to finish, right here in the branch. Summit Bank has a new type of personal installment loan. It's called the cash back loan. When you receive a new loan, you'll get an extra check. Cash back equal to the first 30 days of interest, up to $200. But apply now. This offer ends soon. The only friend to borrow from, Summit Bank. Now lending in your neighborhood. Pepperoni Lovers Pizza from Pizza Hut. Now get one medium for eight ninety nine or two for just four dollars more. Spring in the winter time. I Think love this spring. weather. Spring. Do you really? Weather. Boy, yeah. bums me out. Bums I'm me sorry. out. It really does. Well, nobody really cares either. <laughs> I don't think. Uh, temperatures ten to fifteen degrees above the normal. Yeah. Uh, continuing right through the middle of the week. Right now, our current temperature thirty seven degrees. Well above the normal for this time of the year at this time of the night. Winds though coming up out of the southwest at nine help to keep that temperature up. Humidity eighty nine percent with the barometer steady now at thirty point one four. Nothing happening with storm track radar. Our high for today climbed to forty five after an overnight low last night of twenty four. A little bit of snowfall, just a trace of it reported at Bear Field early this morning. Temperatures right. Now now over Indiana are in the upper 30s throughout much of northern and central parts of the state. South Bend is 37, uh, Indianapolis 38 degrees, Evansville is a cool spot, 33 degrees down at Evansville while over in western Ohio there. Temperatures right now in the uh, mid to upper 30s throughout all of western Ohio at this time, 38 degrees right now up at uh, Toledo. Skies are clear over much of Indiana at this time. We just have a few clouds across northern Illinois into northern Indiana, but clear skies not only throughout much of the Great Lakes area, but much of the eastern two-thirds of the country. Clouds up into the Pacific, or uh, up into the uh, northeast, New England, and quite a bit of cloudiness in the northwest from the northern Rockies to the Pacific coast. As you can see, some precipitation uh, in the form of showers and also in the form of snow moving ashore as another system moves into the Pacific northwest. This is where most of the weather is occurring right now. Very wintry out there with uh, 
temperatures uh, expected to fall 20 degrees below the normal back into uh, northern California. Heavy snows in the higher elevations of Washington, Oregon, and all the way back into Idaho. They're expecting almost a foot of snow in the higher elevations. Uh, rain will fall in the lower elevations and the valleys. So a very strong system moving into the Pacific Northwest. Now, our weather maker today was high pressure along the Atlantic coast right now. It helped to... My God, I need you.